Hey there traders and welcome back for another free video from thestockbandit.com. I'm sure glad that you made it. All right, so in this video what I want to talk about is position sizes and specifically your trade size as it pertains to your time frame for the trade. And by that what I mean is that you know we all first need to have a number that we start with in mind that we're able to lose in case the trade fails. We don't want to lose anything at all, but how much can we lose and still stick with the trade and keep a level head? That's kind of our starting point. Maybe that's like 1% of your account, or maybe it's you know, something smaller or something a little bit more than that. It all depends on you and your tolerance for risk. That's kind of the starting point. But then what's really going to matter is it's going to boil down to our time frame for the trade. And meaning, you know, is this a, a position trade that I'm looking to be in for uh, you know, a, a number of months? Or is it a swing trade that I'm just looking for you know, a multi-day move, maybe up to a couple weeks? Or is it a day trade that I'm only going to be in for a couple of hours? Knowing those things, you know, it's really going to dictate my position size for the trade. So let me just give you an example here. This is Win Resorts, W Y N N. Stock's been really suffering here recently. We've seen it just trending its way lower. Every little bounce has been sold. And I say little, those aren't little bounces, but every bounce has been sold. And even more recently, we've kind of got this descending trend line here over the past several weeks. This 107 area has really been an important zone for the stock. And it's one that you know ha has been on my bearish watch list inside the member area for the stockbandit.com. Well, today it broke this 107 area with a pretty decent little decline today. All right, let's say that we're going to take this setup, but we're going to analyze it here on a few different time frames. Okay, suppose that I'm entering a position trade. I'm looking to get short through 107. Okay, which which broke today, but I'm looking for a position trade. Maybe I'm looking for a multi-month move, and ultimately I think this thing comes back down to kind of test this, you know, 73 area. It was kind of prior resistance and then turned into some some support uh, last year. So let's say that I think over the next several months I think this thing's going to decline down to that area. In order to stick with a position like this for that period of time, I've got to size my trade small enough that I can withstand some of those bounces that are inevitable within a downtrend. I can stick with this trade and maintain a level head while I'm waiting for this thing to come down toward that low 70s target. But what if, let's just say that I'm looking to swing trade this and I really think that kind of this 94 area which was prior resistance is going to now get tested. And so I'm looking for a multi-day move down to this 94 area. So I'm looking for about a 13 point move here, you know, short to intermediate term. For a, for a swing trade, I'm going to take a little bit larger size than what I would for that multi-month position trade because I'm looking for a smaller move. Okay, but maybe I only wanted to scalp this on the short side today as a day trade. So I just caught a few points here intraday for a single day move and then you know, ring the register and move the side. For those, those are kind of the smallest moves that there are, and I'm naturally going to size my trade much larger for those. All right. So think of it this way. You can take a really big position and you can look for a small move in the stock, like maybe you know, a couple percent day trading, or you can take a small position in the stock and look for a really big move in the stock, like you know, maybe let's say a you know, 30 or 40 percent move lower on a multi-month position trade and comparing those two you can still achieve the same dollar profit both ways. So expect to trade shorter time frames bigger and longer time frames smaller. I'm going to say that one more time so it sinks in. Expect to trade the shorter time frames bigger and the longer time frames smaller because that's just logical. That's how your trade size should be altered based on your time frame. Okay? Do not get stuck trading the same amount of shares on every single trade because that's just not the most efficient way to trade. Look at your time frame for the trade, size your position accordingly. Thanks again for joining me for this video and feel free to forward this along to a friend you think it might help. I will have more here for you soon, but in the meantime, trade like a bandit. <laughs>